today on EA Sports. It's week four of the NFL on EA Sports. Cincinnati Bengals taking on the Atlanta Falcons. It's the NFL on EA Sports, and there you get a look at Paycor Stadium on the banks of the Ohio River in Cincinnati. Today, it's week four, and we've got what should be a great one here between the Atlanta Falcons and the Cincinnati Bengals. To my left, Charles Davis. And Charles, you focus on this Bengal team entering play. An early season tilt. And when it's an early season tilt, should be ready to roll. Well, let's face it, the aches and pains haven't really set in yet. And both teams eyeing a really good start to get things going. It's 3-0 versus 2-1. A good early season battle as we're underway in week four. Fielded just outside the goal line. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. So here come the Falcons now to get the football for the first time. And a glance here at their shifty mobile signal caller. Okay, I'm not taking a turn to negative town, even though it's going to sound like it. The two interceptions he threw last week, those obviously have to be eliminated, and that was the focus of practice this week. But let's face it, he did throw three touchdown passes. And they got the win. And they got the win. So I think it was a good week for him to work on things. Had some positives, the win being for first and foremost. Now he's just got to eliminate those interceptions. Throwing on first down. Rich. Quick hitter here. It's complete. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. Short completion, just four yards. And that will bring up second down. Well, this defense for the Bengals, they were excellent last week in the win over the Chargers. Yeah, and what stood out to me on tape, the way they were flying to the football. So that tells me that they've got all their assignments down and they're playing with extreme. All right, rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. And the Bengals are going to take possession of the football. Come on now. Well, short of them returning it for a pick six, that was about the worst start you could ask for in this one because your advantage of getting the ball first is gone, and they're set up a short distance from your end zone. Now you're counting on your defense to prevent a touchdown, and your offense, you better be ready to come out swinging on the next series. The Bengals offense here ready to rock and roll. Joe Burrow is the man at quarterback. Hey, we all love a good story, and what we like even more, guys who can fight through adversity. Joe Burrow coming out of high school, goes to Ohio State, doesn't get a chance to start, transfers to LSU, not thought to be a top prospect, ends up the number one pick in the draft, and justifies it. Tremendous play, excellent mobility, and leadership off the charts. A good position to be in here, second and inches. And he'll maybe get back to the line of scrimmage, but no more than that. Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendency. Stay with what you are, stay with who you know, and go get the first down. That's exactly what they did. Ball at the 23, second and eight. And they come with a jet sweep here as Burrow just taps that forward. And able to work his way down to the 16. Heavy set out there on third and one. 
Now a handoff up the middle. Avery. And he is going to have a Bengals first down as they're able to convert, albeit not by much, on third and a yard. If you make the stop there, maybe you hold him to three on this opening drive. They didn't get the stop. Yeah, new set of downs now. Now you're worried about, just as you pointed out, not just giving up three, possibly giving up six. Let's see what they decide to do here because they've got to change up what they have been doing. It hasn't been working. It was a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. Now it's Burrow. This will be caught just inside the 10. We'll go down as a gain of six, and that's going to bring up second down. Up the middle they go. Avery, and that didn't fool anybody. He's going to be dropped in the backfield. Call that a loss of a yard, and things get a little more difficult here, third and five. When a draw works, it can be a thing of beauty. But when it doesn't, oh, it can be ugly. And in this case, loss of yardage ugly. And on third and five, this will be the eighth play of the drive. From the shotgun, Joe Burrow. And he's got it. And the Bengals are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. Really a solid start here on the opening drive, Charles. He's now 4-4, and they're already in plus territory. Brandon, he's been so precise to start this game. Like we're watching an operation taking place right now. Master Surgeon at work. First and goal, a chance to convert that early turnover into points. Now a first carry for their fullback. Trying to keep those big legs churning, but he's going to go down in the backfield. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. After a play like that, it should be congratulations all the way around, I think, because if you can stop a big fullback like that, that's not easily done. Yeah, he does not go down easily. You're right, but he did there. So they're backed up to the three-yard line, second and goal. And again, they'll go right back to their fullback. And trying to push forward, but he is going to be stuffed up in the backfield. That backs him up one yard and brings up third down. We all know how much running backs love getting the ball down near the goal line. They think they're going to find a way into the end zone. He hasn't had that kind of luck so far. Ends up not getting in on the last two carries. You know he's going to be upset about a missed opportunity. And now can they reverse the trend on third and goal with the last two plays having gone backwards? Eluding the pressure right. He's got it. Touchdown, Bengals. A great play there. His first touchdown on the year. And the Bengals take the early turnover and convert it into an opening touchdown. I do believe we came here to see a game, didn't we? And it looks like he's running what we call routes versus air. You just go out there with your offensive unit and throw the football with no defense. He's five for five on the opening drive. He was on his game there for drive number one, but my only thing is now he can't go any higher than that. He was so perfect. Can he do it again later? Yeah, all he cares about right now is making it 10 for 10, 15 for 15, <laughs> that going. and he feels like he can get it done. Touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. Taken in at the three. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. So for the second time in this one, we get set to see the Falcons offense. They threw an interception the first time they had the football, wound up leading to a touchdown the other way. How do you approach drive number two? Going back to your game plan coming in, everyone has matchups that they like better than others, where they think they have an advantage. Dial up some of those plays. Try and go to those spots and get your offense moving. Well, look there at his numbers on the ground a week ago. Pretty good as he found himself in the end zone on two separate occasions. And those are the most important numbers because no matter what you pile up prior to the goal line, getting in is all that matters. Putting those numbers up on the board, and they love them when they're sixes. 
forced out to his left. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. He was certainly quick to atone for his early game interception. Instead of making another mistake forcing something, he reset himself and found a lane to pick up the first down. Clock rolling as we hit the midway point of this first quarter. On first down, Rich. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. Only able to gain a couple there, and it's second down. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. Second down. It's Stanley. No gain on the play, and it's going to bring up a third down. Looking to throw. Rich. Throw left side complete. That's Jacobs. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals' 26. Last play, they got stuffed at the line. Different story here, over 20 yards. See some head shaking on that defensive sideline because so much focus on taking away what he did last week as an FC Offensive Player of the Week. Big gain there for him to start. I love your observation because you would think they'd be prepared for him after what he did the previous week. But sometimes that skill set actually intimidates a defense, and he used it to his great advantage. Wide open receiver complete. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. Chewing up big yardage. Another nice gain there. This one goes for 20. Just picking up yardage in bunches here. These last few plays, they have moved right down the field. And just like that, they're going to be set up with a first and goal. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Now they'll run the option to the short side left, and he'll take it into the end zone. Touchdown, Atlanta. It's their quarterback hitting double digits with his 10th touchdown of the season. And the Falcons are within an extra point of tying up this ball game. And maybe the defense caught a little by surprise there that he took off and got in? Yeah, I would think so, because if you're analyzing it from that side of the ball, you're thinking running back, fullback. <laughs> Takes you a while before you get to the quarterback. Point after, right down the middle. And we are tied at seven. So all even at seven now as they kick it away. Turn this one, he'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Cincinnati coming back onto the field here for their second drive. The offense running out, and they are charged up, ready to go after reaching the end zone on their last drive. And normally I'd warn against getting complacent just because they scored the last time out, but I don't think there's any worries with this group right now. This is a hungry group, and they want to keep building off of their last drive. Now they just want the officials to hurry up and place the ball so they can snap it and get back to work. On second down now, Avery. Give him four on the carry, and it'll make this a third and about two. Burrow will throw. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. Partner, we've got ourselves a ball game, and those guys on defense, they came to play. Slipped up on their first series, but they're definitely settling in now and letting it be known that points won't come so easy again. The Bengals bring out their punter now as he'll come on to kick this one away. That'll be a 47-yard punt, officially five on the return. And they will take over first and 10. Atlanta now coming out on the field. 
This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Back to throw. Rich. He finds his man complete. That's Stanley. And he'll be stopped short of the first down as they rally to tackle him at about the 28. That'll give him eight that time. And that's going to make it fourth down. Brandon, it certainly looked like they had that play defended well, but it still almost worked. Got it to the running back. He wound up getting really good yardage out of it. But it was third and long, and they were able to rally and stop it before he could get to the marker. The Falcons send out their punter as he's on to kick it away. They only punted twice in the win last week as he gets this one away. Call that a 46-yard punt with a net of 40 on the six-yard return. And the Bengals take over first and 10. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. Although his reputation as a speedy runner precedes him, it's always fun to watch him work. It is eye-opening, isn't it? Because when you see him get the ball and just go, in addition to that speed, it helps out his blockers. They don't have to hold blocks for long because he's just going to speed right past them. Right back to him on first down. He'll work his way up the middle for a gain of about four, second down. And hold on here, because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. Now a second down and six. Now Burrow, finding a safety valve here. That's complete. And they're able to work this across midfield to the 48. On first down, Avery. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the lot. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Now he dumps this off over the middle. And he'll be brought down inside the 40-yard line. So third and two. This quite possibly four-down territory, though, if they're stopped. One back in the backfield. He'll get the carry. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 41. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result, negative yardage. So coming on now is the field goal unit. They're going to try for three, and he'll need all the leg he's got here. And that is no good. And in this first quarter of play, this will remain a tie ball game. Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. 
Defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and 10. About set to begin their next drive. The Falcons offense at the line. And across midfield he goes and into Bengal territory. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. Operating from the gun. Rich. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And he'll be brought down inside the 40-yard line. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Looking to throw. Rich. And he will find his man on the end route. Complete. And he's going to be brought down on what will be the final play of this first quarter. 7-7, our score after one. On first and ten, Rich, he finds his man complete. It's Jacobs. And he's going to be taken down right at the ten-yard line. When you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. I think if we put together a job description for a middle linebacker, we would start with being able to hold down things in the middle of the line of scrimmage and be able to take on blockers. But how about the guys who can go sideline to sideline and make plays? Love a guy that can do that. We saw a perfect example of it right there. Seventh play of the drive now as they come up on a third and three. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. Touchdown, Falcons! From three yards out, and the Falcons have moved out in front. Well, CD, you know he's got great options at wide receiver tight end, but there he looks to the backfield, and it results in a touchdown. I love how you laid that out. So many options. You maybe forget about some of the ones that you should be covering. And they made them pay with that one, didn't they? You forget about the guys in the backfield, they're eligible too. The extra point splits the uprights, and that makes the score 14 to 7. So this drive spans seven plays, and it ends with a three yard scoring run. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. Taking it about the one. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. Now the Cincinnati offense ready to see what they can do here. That 7 0 lead of theirs short lived as they've now given up two straight touchdowns to fall behind by seven. Yeah, but no cause for discouragement here. Yeah, they've fallen behind, but haven't they proven that they can go down and score? So, what was the formula that got them down there the first time? Get back to something close to that, and maybe they can get this game tied up. So now, second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. They'll look to throw here. He finds his man complete. It's Hammond. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. Here's Burrow. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. That'll go for a gain of seven at its second down. And Burrow going to throw again. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. First catch for him on the afternoon, and it results in a first down. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. He finds his man complete. That's Hammond. And they'll get to him after a gain of seven to the 47. Second down and three. Now it's Burrow. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. 
And he's going to be taken down right at the 40-yard line. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. Now they go play action now. Burrow flushed out right. And they're going to work this down to about the 32-yard line. I do think it's fair to say that they were caught off guard a little bit when he decided not to throw it up first down. But give them credit. They recovered in time to deny him the first down yardage. But it's only second and short. So that run is still likely to lead to a new set of downs. And he'll be brought down at the 27. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. Now Burrow on first down. Quick hitter here, it's complete. Pulling a gain of three on the play, and it'll be second down. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. It, he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. He's certainly done a nice job spreading the field on this drive, and here he finds his big tight end for good yardage. And that's what you have to do. Keep defenses guessing about where you're going to go with the football. Here we go, here we go. Nice hot. And now a carry here for their fullback. And he is in. Touchdown, Bengals. It's the fullback. His first rushing touchdown on the year. And the Bengals are an extra point away from drawing level. Well, they weren't messing around. First and goal, they don't do anything fancy. They just go to the fullback right away. I like how you phrase that because oftentimes they come back to the fullback when it's late in the down and distance count, right? In this case, first down, let's go get it right now. And he got it. Six points on the board. McPherson on for the point after. And we've got a good one brewing. We're all knotted up at 14. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And it's finished off with a five-yard touchdown run. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. Here's Jones to bring it out of the end zone. And ultimately, he stopped right where he would have been if he had simply gone down to a knee at the 25. Atlanta now coming out on the field. A lot of time for this unit to game plan on the sideline after that drive that they watched the other side just score. But remember, last time they were out, they scored as well. We'll see if they can seize that momentum right back. And they have had a lot of time to cool off from reaching the end zone the last time. So have they been able to keep themselves? Oh, a leap, and he will make the catch. And he's going to be taken down at the 28-yard line. And that was a high degree of difficulty on that one. But to me, it goes back to fundamentals and determination. High point the football and declare it yours. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. Back to throw. Rich. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. So now they'll come up on second and 10, once again from the 28. Now a man open down the middle of the field. And they're going to get this down inside the 20. The Falcons on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. On fourth down, they'll try and run for it. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 16. 
So this offense able to convert on fourth, and now a fresh set of downs here, first and ten. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And he's going to be marked down just outside the ten. Looking to throw on second down. Rich, touchdown! An 11 yard touchdown as they have taken the lead. That's an old fashioned death march there, partner. Took them a lot of plays, but hey, they did the job. And the defense always preaches getting off the field, making a play, and turning it back over to their own offense. Unable to do so. A long, sustained drive by the offense. Point after try, forthcoming. It's up and good, and that'll make the score 21-14. So the drive winds up going 75 yards in seven plays. And the end result, an Atlanta touchdown. Fielded just outside the goal line. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. The Bengals offense now, they head back onto the field. And that last drive, so effective in the passing game, resulting in the touchdown. Maybe not many people were focused on the trenches. There was good protection there. Excellent protection. So now defensively, you've almost got to get down into those starters blocks like you're a sprinter. Get lower than those guys on offense and find a way to roar through them or around them to get into the face of the pass. Easier said than done, though. Way easier said than done. But they've got to try something because right now they're just cutting them to shreds. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. On third down, Burrow steps away to his left. Well, it's a shuffle pass, and it's complete. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. So eight yards on the completion there, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. A short game that doesn't get him the first down brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before it. The Bengals bring out their punter now as he'll punt it away for the second time. This is taken at about the 14. A punt of 46, a return of five. And that will come the offense as they take over. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. The passing game, they've had more success there than the running game. Maybe something they game plan for. How come they didn't tell us about it? Because they wanted to keep it a secret. <laughs> we did ask, didn't we? But I think what happened in this one is they've realized that they've established the run pretty well, and teams are going to key on that. They thought they could open it up and have success through the air, and that's exactly what's going on. Yeah, they've had success at least so far here in the second quarter. On second down, it's Stanley, and he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. And that's a nice pickup of a first down on that second down run. And at that yardage gain, they can run that play on any down. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Now here's the option play going left. Found a little room there as he's up to about the 37. From the 37, they work on second and six. Looking to throw. Rich, he finds his man complete. That's Stanley. Ten yards there and a first down for the Falcons. Operating from the gun. Rich. Throwing middle, and it's complete. And he'll be brought down on the other side of midfield at the 43. Boy, the evolution of the game and how these guys on plays like that can get out of the pocket, keep plays alive, it just makes things so much harder for defenses. It really does, and we're talking about an era in the game 
where the quarterbacks are the most athletically gifted that we've seen in a bunch. I mean, we talk about collectively, it's unbelievable. So their ability to move is practiced now. No, bottled up, fumble. It's out, it's loose. And the Bengals grab it. And his crew will take over at their own 45-yard line. Holding on to the football, becoming a little bit of an issue. He had two fumbles last week, remember? I played for a guy that used to talk all the time about creating turbulence in the pocket, making the quarterback jumpy, making Mancy, keep getting after him a little bit, and make sure he thinks about holding on to the ball because you're going after him. Burrow going to lead up the Bengals here first and 10 at the 45. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And they'll get this down to the 42-yard line. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. Throwing now, Burrow on first down. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Hammond. And they'll work this down inside the 30. 12 yards that time at a Cincinnati first down. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. They're going to look to throw. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. That one unable to develop, never got going. A loss of a couple, and it's second down. Well, that's not exactly how they drew that one up, nor practiced it, because on first down, you're trying to get some yardage to set up second and third down calls. In this case, had to drop it off to his running back. But boy, they closed quickly on that one and stopped him behind the line of scrimmage. To throw again on second down, Burrow. He finds his man complete. That's Hammond. And he'll be marked down right at the 20-yard line. They should have put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. On third and one, Burrow. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he is going to have a Bengals first down as they're able to convert by plenty there on third and one. I got a kick out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. And now Burrow not enamored with the formation. Instead, he'll signal for a timeout as he'll stop it with exactly a minute to go before halftime. They will throw on first down with Burrow. And the timing a bit off that time as that one falls to the ground. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And he'll take it across midfield to the 46-yard line. Well, I would guess it combined, if you spoke to both defenses, neither side has a lot to celebrate today. They haven't had a lot of stops, but that one right there, that's a big one because they stole points away with that play. And just as importantly, picked up a key stop on an offense that's been really impressive here in the early going. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. He's been good. His guys are winning. So far, the recipe working here in the second quarter. And he doesn't like to just tote the rock. He wants to carry his team on his back, and that's what he's done throughout this game. Yeah, he's done that. He'll be hoping to continue that trend. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. Now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Throwing on first down, Rich. And that throw behind his man. He missed him, incomplete. From the 21, it's second and 10. Throwing again. Rich, flush to his right. And he's down inside the five at the four before he's out of bounds. Able to make 
it's something out of nothing there. 17 yards and a first down. No shortage of impressive moments from him thus far. Now he's halfway to the century mark, and we're still in the first half. There's been no answer for his running ability so far by the defense. I can't wait to see what adjustments they'll have to make during the halftime break. A chance to really cap off a big first half here as they come up on first and goal. Back to throw. Rich, and he fires one that's intercepted. And now nothing but green ahead of him. He's at the 50. The 30, 10, 5, and he's given his guys a shot for late points as they will take over in range for a field goal or maybe more. Well, Brandon, as they say in popular culture, this one's going to leave a mark because they can see the end zone, but it'll stay out of reach because of their error. All their offensive teammates have to give the quarterback right now, offer a little bit of encouragement because what's done is done. Let's get them next time out. A chance now to get even before the break as they come up first and goal. And a quick throw here, that's complete. Nothing at all on that one. It'll be second down. Now back to throw. Back of the end zone, could he get his feet down? No, it's incomplete. So it's third and goal, and now the question, can this Falcon defense stand tall once more? Sliding out of the pocket. And he'll just throw this one over in the way of the security crew. Incomplete here. McPherson's kick is good. And that'll bring him back within four. So golden field position there squandered as they can muster only a field goal. Yeah, you were gifted a first to goal situation, but I have to give credit to the defense. They were brought out in a really tough situation, so give them credit for holding them to three. That's a pretty nice accomplishment. And with time running down, they go down to a knee. Here we go, here we go. So we've reached halftime here in a four-point game. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, we'll get back to you guys in a bit. But first, time for a trip around the league on this final weekend of September. Next, let's get over to Baltimore to check on the Ravens at home at M&T Bank Stadium. And they currently trail the visiting Philadelphia Eagles. The Eagles trying to hold on and claim victory. Lastly, we're off to the Rocky Mountain, Denver, Colorado. See what's happening with the Broncos. And they trail in that one to the visiting Las Vegas Raiders. The Raiders trying to finish that one off and claim victory. Meanwhile, in our game, no shortage of offense as each team has been able to move the ball effectively. Will the defenses show up in the second half? Find out. We give it back to our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. And he will not bring it out. It's a touchback. The Bengal offense now with a football first here to begin quarter number three. This offense, Charles, had a strong first half throwing the football, at least in terms of yardage, but that hasn't translated so far on the scoreboard as they begin the third quarter here, trailing and looking for a little momentum. Yeah, you're right about that because, you know, let's face it, in the first half, most of their focus was in the passing game, and to their credit, resulted in a healthy amount of yardage. So I would think that at halftime, they're going to anticipate that defense loosening up a little bit to try and cover the passing lanes. They've got to get the running game going, and there should be some gaps to run through now. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. Now he's going to swing this one out to his running back. No gain on the screen there. It's second down. Out of the gun, it's Burrow. 
It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. Burrow looking to pass. Buying time to his left. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. He's got room at the 30. That gain on third down, good for 28. Now that's all about making something happen as a quarterback because instead of forcing something on third down, how about him buying some time outside of the pocket, waiting for someone to come open? And when he did, he put it on him for a big play and a first down. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10 as they've got it to the 28-yard line. Again, he'll drop the throw. And he'll be marked down right at the 15-yard line. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there. Forced the ball free, and it's second down. On second down now, Avery. They stopped after only a yard, taking it down to the 14. Now play number eight on this drive, and they need nine yards to pick up the first on third. He'll look to throw, twisting away. And oh, he's just going to be short here, barely. Maybe by a half a foot, it'll be fourth and inches. I thought they might take a shot down the field, but instead they ran a little drag route there. I think they were hoping he could catch it and run away from the defender. But a really good job keeping the play in front of them, and they force a fourth down. as he takes this into the end zone. And I love your description right there, right? Fourth and short. They got that, no problem. Let's go ahead and get the rest of it. Finish it off in the end zone, touchdown. Everyone goes away happy on that one. And McPherson on for the extra point. And that one gives him a three-point lead. That time, a nine-play drive. And it's finished off with a five-yard touchdown run. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. This one fielded at the five. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. Here comes the Falcons offense. It's their first possession of the second half now. And Charles, it feels like we're set up for a good second half here. Came out of the locker room, one score game. Now the lead has already changed hands. Well, this offense, they've got an opportunity right now to take that lead right back. Yeah, and it feels like you're going back and forth almost a little bit like a tennis match, right? And we're just, you know, our heads just keep moving. Which side has it? Which side's going to score? How are they going to go out doing it? A little bit of a challenge for each side trying to match each other. He finds his man complete. That's Stanley. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. They go play action here on first down. He finds his man complete. It's Jacobs. And they've got it well across midfield down to the 40 before it's all said and done. An excellent pickup of 20 yards. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. From their own 40 to the other 40, the gain of 20 leads to first and 10. Now a handoff up the middle. 
Stanley. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. They still need about the length of the football here, maybe a little less as they come up on second and inches. Now a nice throw here right side. He hauls it in. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals 16. Inside the red zone here. They'll look to throw. And that's good for a gain of six. And that'll bring up second down. Looking to throw. Rich toward the pylon. Caught. Touchdown, Falcons. A nine-yard touchdown grab. And the Falcons have taken the lead here in this third quarter. So a very strong first drive in this second half, Charles, as they've turned that halftime deficit into a third quarter lead. And they were pretty purposeful there, weren't they? Measured in their approach. But boy, they executed awfully well moving the ball down the field. Out comes the kicking team here for the extra point. And that will make this a four-point game. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. And the Falcons score to cap it off. Atlanta's 11 ready to go, and they kick it away. This will be a touchback, so they'll bring it out to the 25. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. They had gotten the lead with the opening drive touchdown in the third quarter. Now they relinquish that lead back. Could be in for an interesting second half. It certainly appears that way, doesn't it? Almost turning into one of those pendulum games, right, where it swings back and forth, and who's going to make the play that changes that, that maybe it puts it on one side and keeps it there. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. Throwing again on second and 10. Burrow, and up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. You can just kind of sense the momentum turning here. It's first and 10. He'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. This is certainly a team that has proven it likes to target its backs through the air and defensively. They were aware of that and certainly were prepared on that throw. On second and 10, Burrow. He'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And he is going to lose yardage here. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. And that screen there on second down certainly didn't develop how they had hoped. Is that one they should have even tried, or is that one the quarterback sticks in his pocket? I think the latter. I like what you said there, because trying it is one thing. We can second guess just about every call. But in this case, when you realize that it's broken down, just throw it at the feet of your intended receiver so that no one can pick it off, right? You don't have the ball tipped up in the air, and you come back and try and pick up the first down on third down. That way you don't lose any yards. Yardage. Back to throw again. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he is going to have a Bengals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. So he turned to a trusted, familiar face in that third down situation. It paid off. Yeah, you go to your veteran receiver in that spot, so you can't underestimate him when he's on the field defensively. Make sure you know where he is because he understands how to get open in key situations. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and ten. They'll look to throw again. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there, and it's second down. To throw once more on second and ten. Burrow, he finds his man, complete. It's Hammond, and they'll get this down to around the 47-yard line. And on third and five, this will be the eighth play of the drive. Back to throw here. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. 
And he is going to have a Bengals first down. They needed five there on third down. He winds up getting seven. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. And it looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? Throwing again, it's Burrow. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And they're going to get this down to about the 37. Looking to throw again on second down. Burrow, he finds his man, complete. It's Barnes. And he gets it down a yard or two shy of the 30 before he's out of bounds. On third down, Avery. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. Give him a yard on the play, and he's definitely short. It'll be fourth down and a few inches. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. down. Here's Joe Burrow looking left side and he's got a man. That's Barnes. And he is going to have the Bengals first down as they manage to convert and that'll keep the drive alive. 21 yards there. A big play on fourth down. Well the field goal attempt was well in hand. They had that but they decided to go for it anyway. Extreme confidence it looks like. Yeah but I bet the defense is going to remember this one right. They kind of rubbed their nose in it. So after the big play on fourth, here's first and ten. He'll drop to throw. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And we got a pause following the play because it appears a member of the Bengals in some discomfort. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. Second and six. Back to throw. And they're going to get him. They bring him down to the sack back at the 16-yard line. He'll wind up losing a full nine yards here on the sack. Now it's third down. All about the offense so far this drive, putting something sustained together. But the defense, they responded on that play. Second and manageable became third and long. The drive marching to the end zone is one play from stalling out. So that'll leave Burrow and the Bengals with a third and long after that sack we just saw. They'll look to throw. That's complete right around the eight. It'll be a gain of 12, but it will also lead to fourth down. Nice job understanding the situation. Third and long, kept the play in front of them and made the tackle. They gave up a good chunk of yardage, but it does force a fourth down. So on fourth down, off goes Burrow. On comes Evan McPherson for the Bengal field goal. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. McPherson's kick is good, and that'll bring him back within a point. So the response to that touchdown on the other side to begin the third quarter. Look, just three points, but still a response nonetheless. You're exactly right about that because I think you needed to answer back with something, even though it's not six. Just enough to send a message that says, hey, we're not going away. Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. 
And the football changing hands here and as this offense takes a field. Charles, they'd be fine with more of the same on this upcoming drive. Last time out, they found the end zone for six. And they're certainly hoping for more of the same, but the game plan, I doubt it'll just be a carbon copy of the last drive because I think this offense is ready to break out some new wrinkles and try some new things that might be hidden in their playbook. They want to use that confidence to its advantage while also keeping the defense from anticipating what's up next. Well, he's had success running the football in this one, and that's undeniable. But that time, the defense was on to it. And partner, I think the more you see a play like this, the more they're able to diagnose it quicker and easier for them to defend it. I think you have to dress it up.